This is a quick demo of a gift I made for my wife for our uh, fifth anniversary, which is uh, supposed to be a wood gift. Um, so I, I made this wooden box out of walnut, um, but as you can see, there's no clear way to open it. And so the, the trick to this is uh, there's a special way to open it. You just knock on the front, and then it opens all by itself. And now this open, you can see there's an area to actually put stuff in the box over on the right. And then on the left is this mechanism that does the automatic opening and closing. And another knock just closes it. So I made this out of uh, these thin sheets of walnut uh, that I just found on eBay. Uh, they're shaped with a hand saw and belt sander mostly. Um, this is my first attempt at an inlay. That's a cherry inlay, which came out pretty well. Um, in order to, to uh, get everything worked out, I did a practice box here first, which doesn't have the opening mechanism in it. But um, these are pretty simple. Uh, no special joints at the corners. I just printed out, uh, I designed it in CAD and printed out these... Uh, layouts that I glued to the wood and cut it out and then the, the pieces just overlap um, to make the edges and they're held only with glue and then the joint is made with a little bit of music wire drilled in. For the opening mechanism I used one of these little gear motors that I found on eBay and a couple of other sites and then that just uh, interfaces with a, a big gear uh, just a nylon gear and then that cranks this arm which is formed out of music wire and pushes up on the lid here. Um, the mechanism I designed in CAD in SOLIDWORKS to get the spacings correct um, to get the lid to go 90 degrees and because I was able to design it in there um, I could simplify the electronics by making the motor turn only one direction so instead of needing an H bridge I could just use a transistor to operate it. So this only runs in one direction and when it opens it just goes until the wire as it protrudes through the other side of gear pushes onto this limit switch and that's how it tells it that it's open. Then it goes back to sleep and waits for another knock and runs it in the same direction until the lid pushes down on this limit switch and that's how it knows it's closed. Uh, consumes about 30 microamps in sleep, and I run some calculations and figure it'll run for a couple of years, even if you were to open it once every single day. Um, it's just very low power consumption. The motor only draws about 25 or 30 milliamps while it's running, and it's about a six second cycle for open and close. To detect knocks, um, I embedded a piezo sensor in the front panel and it's actually just the element that I tore out of a piezo speaker. So it's a fairly big uh, piezo element, just using it in, in reverse to generate electrical signals based on percussion instead of the other way around as it's normally used. It was a bit difficult to get the knock sensor to be sensitive enough. And I actually had to try a couple of times. Here was the first attempt. Um, for this one I left the front piece solid, glued the sensor on there, and then there's some uh, milled out sections on this piece so that the um, knock sensor was embedded between them, but it turned out to be too insensitive and needed a really hard knock. So I did another version where I uh, tried to mill this out, or essentially route this out, uh, but all I have is a Dremel to do that and it didn't work and ended up cutting through the front. So I ended up chiseling this out, basically cut a rectangle down to about two-thirds of the thickness of it, flattened out the bottom of that, glued the sensor in, and then this rear brace piece is left solid and then there's a pedestal, a thin piece of wood that extends into this and holds the sensor. So the sensor is actually mounted up here about there and then there's a big hollow space in here so there's a large section of this front piece that is very thin wood and that allows it to flex and it puts all that force right on the sensor when you knock on it. 
and that just generates a little voltage spike. It's kept uh, at, in check with some resistors, but that wakes up the microcontroller that you can see down there um, by uh, throwing a pin high, and then it just wakes up, runs the motor until it sees the switch, and there's also some basic checks for uh, timeouts in case something goes wrong with the mechanism. And then I put a divider in here so you can keep stuff away from the, the mechanism when you're actually storing things in there. And then one last feature, just in case something goes wrong, a dead battery or the mechanism breaks, I put these little holes that basically just give access to the ends of the hinge pins. So if something goes wrong, I can actually stick a screwdriver in there, pop the ends out, and then pull the pins out, and then the whole lid can uh, come loose so you can access the mechanism. There will be a uh, full write-up for this project on my blog. Probably have that up within the next week with some pictures and uh, you know progress along the way for the whole project.